chords, man. You're looking for chords? You're looking for like royalty free chords and stuff? Because I got you, man. I got you if you're looking for royalty free. I got all royalty free. I got like F, B flat. I got A. I got E. All except maybe D minor. That's the saddest of all chords. You know, that might be owned by Spinal Tap, but everything else, I got you if you're looking for royalty. Oh, you want pro? You want the heavy stuff. You want the heavy stuff, you were looking for pro chords. I got those, man. I got like C sharp at nine. I got like a diminished. I got like augmented. I got the pro chords, man, if you want that. But it's going to cost you some serious cheddar. You're not going to write a hit song without pro chords, man. You're not going to. Oh, you don't got it? You don't got the serious cheddar for that? Oh, yeah. I can't just give it away, man. I can't just give away chords and stuff like that. It's crazy, man. Nobody can. Yeah, well, come back when you got some serious cheddar because I will hook you up with pro chords, man. Pro chords. Remember, I got you. When it comes to pro chords, man, I got you, all right? I got you, man. Hey guys, it's Steve from Feather Light Studio, and you've seen the ads, you've heard about them, you've seen them all over your YouTube feed. It seems like half the time you can't get rid of them. <laughs> Royalty-free chords, pro chords. I'm talking about, of course, MIDI chord packs. The MIDI chord pack. MIDI chord pack. MIDI chord pack. So let's talk a little bit about what makes this aggressive marketing campaign style so much different than other products you might be interested in buying. We are all the benefactors of advertising. If you're a YouTuber content creator, whether through AdSense or sponsorships or cards or whatever, we're all the benefactors of those tools. And those are positive tools. They're good things for us content creators because it allows our channels to thrive and to grow. So if you're looking into a new piece of gear, for example, just beginning to research it or a new service that you just heard about, you rely on two different things to start that process. One is advertising. You need to be notified about it in the first place. And then you rely on reviews to find out more information, hopefully unbiased information, about what it is so you can make an informed purchasing decision. The problem arises when you can't tell the difference. So when we look at things like Amazon Vine reviews, it's a good example of how sponsored reviews muddy the waters and make it harder and harder to get an unbiased idea or opinion or review about something that we're interested in buying. Well, MIDI chord packs are kind of advertised the same way with a new and a little more clever wrinkle. A lot of times the people that they're trying to get testimonials for are being paid just to mention the name. And then all of those mentions are strung together in a really long line of testimonials that look like practically everyone on the internet is using your product. Now, no one is a bigger advocate of new and creative tools that make the process of creating songs and beats and song creation easier than me. I love new tools and I love new things that make that process easier. But paying people to simply mention your product and then stringing it along in this endless line of testimonials that you can't seem to get off your YouTube channel is really blurring the line between what's ad-based and what's review and testimonial based. And that would all be fine, but it's the fact that they demonize music theory in the process that's the real issue here. So the problem with that kind of really aggressive ad-based campaign and marketing is that it's based on fear and it doesn't really give you much credit at all. Fear that the music process and the music theory process is so incredibly sophisticated and daunting that you'll never be able to do it, and you should just grab some of our MIDI chords out of our pack and use those instead. Well, think about that. Think that all the way through for a sec. If you bought that because it had a beautiful melody in it, every other person who buys that MIDI chord pack has that exact same melody. If you bought that because of those chord progressions, every other person who buys that will have those exact same chord progressions. The irony is that most music creation applications or DAWs, be it Logic or Reason or FL Studio or even GarageBand or Cubase, have vastly superior song creation tools than MIDI chord packs offer. And they're already in your application. You don't have to know anything about music theory to use them at all. But the difference and the most important part of this is that you're gonna make your own creative decisions when you listen and play with those tools. And the result is gonna to be totally unique because you thought of it. 
your own life experiences, your own musical inspirations are all going to go into that final result. And that is going to be vastly more creative than anything you're going to get out of a MIDI chord pack. So to illustrate our point, let's build a completely unique and original beat inside of our DAW of choice using no kind of music theory whatsoever other than just what sounds good. We're just going to use the built-in song creation tools inside our DAW. Now our DAW happens to be Cubase, but it could be any of the ones that we mentioned before. And if you're really bent on using MIDI chord charts, if that's what's comfortable and familiar to you, I'll leave a bunch of links in the description below where you can get them for free. But for the time being, let's jump in and make some beats and use nothing but what sounds good to us. So here we are in Cubase 12. Lots of great stuff and tools and stuff in here. So we're going to start from scratch as if we don't know anything about theory at all. So we're going to add a track here. We're going to create an instrument track and we're going to use Hallian SE. This is kind of their sample player. And it's got a ton of different sounds, all kinds of different stuff. So the first thing we're going to use, we're going to put a piano in here. So this is just a regular piano. And we're not gonna be playing it from a piano controller or a MIDI controller. We're gonna start as if we don't know anything about theory at all. So we're simply gonna load up a piano on track one so that we can hear what we're doing. And we're gonna come over here and we're gonna monitor the channel. All right, so from here, the first thing we're gonna do is, is we're gonna enable the lower zone down here and we're gonna come over to chord pads. Cubase has a really clever way of creating MIDI information or MIDI chord packs, if you will, without knowing anything about them. And you don't have to go into your browser or dig around on your laptop. They're literally all right here on these pads. You just click on them. Those are all pretty basic chords. Say we're looking for something a little more interesting. We can change the complexity or interest of that chord by going on the right arrow. All right, so if we don't know beans about any of this, let's just click around and find something that sounds interesting. So, okay, so that sounds kind of cool. So this, let's go to the next one. Okay, that sounds kind of cool. Um, these little up and down arrows change how high pitched or low pitched, which is known in the world of music as voicings. So we can go up or down in the voicings by doing that. Let's click downward. And if you go upward, so hear how things get higher or lower pitched. Anyway, pick one that sounds interesting. Okay, so that sounds pretty cool. Let's go to that one. And maybe let's make that one a little more interesting by going to the right arrow here. So that sounds pretty cool. And then this one over here, that sounds a little bland. So we'll just keep... Okay, that sounds pretty cool. All right, so let's say that's the chords we want to use. To use these chords in a production, we simply click and drag them onto the timeline. So let's drag that one up here. This process is literally identical to using MIDI chord packs. The difference here is you get to change them on the fly with whatever sounds good. And then we'll drag that one up here again. Drag that one up here. And then... That's kind of cool. We'll drag that one as kind of the end sort of section. Maybe we'll make another version of this one. That sounds pretty funky. All right, we'll drag that one up here. All right, so there's basically all these chords, and now we can instantly play them. All right, and so we could add one, maybe one other chord. Let's actually drag these guys to the end, and then we'll put like one other chord in here. Yeah, maybe we'll put that one in here, there. And we haven't done anything. We haven't used any kind of music theory. We've literally just clicked on pads. And then when we like what we heard, we just drug it up into the timeline here. And currently, What's playing these sounds, these MIDI chord pads or chord patterns, they're playing our piano sound inside 
of Halion Sonic SE, which is our sample player. And most DOS have some version of a sample player with a ton of different kinds of sounds, just like this one does. So let's make this a little bit more interesting. So continuing on with not knowing anything about theory at all, let's add another track to this. So we're just gonna add a MIDI track and we'll just call this MIDI 2. And you'll notice that when we add this MIDI track, it changes the MIDI transmission channel from one, which is where our piano is right now. We're gonna make it so it's on tr channel two so that we can hear what plays on the number two slot here. So let's go down and find something totally different. Let's, um, let's go to the synth category and we'll come down here and find something to put in slot number two that's totally different sounding. So let's see what this is. Yeah, it's kind of funky. Let's see what this is. Okay, perfect. So this sound is an arpeggiated sound and we don't actually have to play them. We're just gonna load them in into the same spot. So that'll be great. We'll have our piano on track one and we'll have this sound, this water pearl sound on track two. But there's no performance data or MIDI information on track two at all. So let's put exactly what we have up here on track two. So we're just gonna duplicate this and now we have exactly the same thing on track one as we do on track two. The difference is they're both playing different sounds. And so far we haven't used any music theory at all. All we've literally done is just drug some of these up into the timeline. And then we took that exact same track and we duplicated it. So let's hear what we end up with. Put it on loop mode. All right, so that's a pretty cool and interesting sounding chord line and chord structure without knowing anything about music theory at all. And all we've really done is we just had one sampler playing a piano sound. And then we had our next track over here. This is playing kind of this arpeggiated vibe. And we haven't done anything else other than simply dupe those two tracks, duplicate those two tracks, and they're playing the exact same thing as each other. The difference is the second track has the arpeggiation going on there, and it makes it a lot more interesting as a musical line. All right, so from here, all we really need to do to get a more interesting production here, maybe some, let's, let's add some drum tracks. We'll go through here and find something. All right, so if you find something that sounds good. All right, so we've just been clicking around, finding drum sounds that seems to match with our existing idea here. When we find one that we like, we can simply just drag it into the track line and it creates our drum loop already time matched to our tempo. So if we drag that out, we basically have a composition in less than five minutes. From here, you could continue to add effects to the track and tweak it the way you want for the production style that you're after. It totally doesn't matter. It's just the difference is you're adding your own ideas and you're adding your own creative input to the finished product. And that makes all the difference in the world. Hey guys, thanks for hanging out today. I really appreciate it. If you learned something, please hit the subscription and notification bells. It really does help keep the channel going. We'll do more beat creation videos in the future on different platforms so you can get a broader view of those song creation tools and different applications. But for now, stay safe, be creative, put something creative out into the universe. It needs it a lot more than you realize. We'll catch you guys in the next video.